Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again today. I got another single board computer in the mail. This is by MQ Maker and it's the MIQI single board computer. I'm not exactly sure how they want it pronounced, so I'm just going to call it the MI board from here on out. On paper, this thing seems pretty cool. Two gigabytes of RAM, a rock chip, 3288, just like the Tinker board. It's pretty much set up just like a Raspberry Pi. Comes with a heatsink in the package. Pretty beefy little heatsink. And some thermal adhesive. Let's go ahead and check out the board a little bit closer here. This thing seems pretty promising. Actually, it's a very small company called MQ Maker. They did launch a Kickstarter. It didn't do well, but they still sell the board. So the power comes in through a micro USB. It has HDMI 2.0. We have a little five volt fan adapter here, two little pins. Over on the back side here, we have gigabit ethernet, four USB 2.0 ports, a few GPIO header pins over here and some on the other side. On the bottom, we have a micro SD card slot. It also has 16 gigabytes of onboard storage and a U-boot button right here. So they do offer Android and Debian plus Ubuntu Core. Do a little size comparison here. This does not have Bluetooth or Wi-Fi built in. Here's the up board. And this board here is pretty much the same form factor as a Raspberry Pi. We have the friendly arm Nano Pi M3. Odroid C2. Odroid XU4 and a Raspberry Pi 2. The Raspberry Pi 2 is the same size as a Raspberry Pi 3. This is the USB Wi-Fi adapter I'll be using, so it does make the board a little bigger, but you could find a smaller one online. So like I said at the beginning, this board does look really good on paper. It has the quad core 1.8 gigahertz ARM CPU, a Mali T760 MP4 GPU clocked at 600 megahertz. Way more powerful than the Raspberry Pi's GPU but we could have all the power in the world and if we don't have good software, this board is going to be junk. They do offer Ubuntu Mate, Debian, Ubuntu Core, and Android 5.1. So first off, I wanna test out Android 5.1. I'm gonna run a few benchmarks, test a few games, test out Kodi, and we'll see how this board performs. Before we move over for the Android test, I just wanted to give you a comparison between the Asus Tinker board, which is on the right, and the MIQI board with the heatsink installed on the left. Now the Asus board does come with Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, but they both have the same CPU and GPU. As you can see, the MIQI board is lacking a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, but that can be easily fixed with a USB adapter. Let's go ahead and test out the MIQI board now. So this is about my fifth boot and I've installed it to the internal eMMC storage, 16 gigabytes. I also installed Google Home, a new launcher. I'll show you the stock launcher that comes pre-installed on the image. And it looks pretty good. I mean, it's basic Android here, but I kind of enjoy the Google Home launcher a little better. And I'm gonna switch to that right now. You really don't notice much of a difference. Let's go ahead and check out the specs. We're gonna launch IDA64 and see what this thing has in it. So we have the Rock Chip CPU. It's an RK3288, two gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. The CPU is actually clocked at 1.6 gigahertz in this Android build. Now I've contacted the developers and I'm trying to get an overclocked version of this. It runs great at 1.6 though. I hate these ads. Screen resolution is 1920 by 1080. This CPU is capable of 4K. We have four cores. Refresh rate, 120 hertz. I don't know if that's right. Could be. OpenGL 3.1. So we'll have OpenGL 2.0, 1.1, all that good stuff. So I ran into two three times and I'm actually very impressed with the score. We scored a 49,734. Actually, this is the highest score I have ever tested on a ARM-based single board computer using Antutu. Pretty impressive if you ask me. CPU, 16,000. 3D is pretty good. 
9923 Now, if we go in and we compare this to $700, $800 phones, this is going to fall very short. This board was originally designed to be a $35 single board computer. And to tell you the truth, I'm not exactly sure what they're selling for right now. I will leave links in the description for you. Last time I checked, I found them for 69 bucks. And you can see here, we're way off from even the uh, Redmi Note 3, whatever that is. Next up, 3D Mark. For Slingshot, we scored a 699, very low. For Ice Storm Unlimited, 12,482. If we go to compare that with other devices, now these are way more expensive devices, except for that Nvidia Shield up there. That's a $200 device, 199, which is, in my opinion, the best Android TV box you can buy. So for Ice Storm Unlimited, we're way down here, 12,000. Now, even my tiny little Atom X5 CPUs that I've been testing on these boxes, the upboard, scores higher than this, but that's an X86 CPU. This is the highest scoring ARM single board computer that I've tested. Next up, I ran a Geekbench, and I only ran this once because the new Geekbench 4.0 takes forever. Let's go ahead and see what it scores in Geekbench. In Geekbench, for a single core score, we scored an 804. For a multi-core score, we scored a 1995. Not too bad for a cheap single board computer running an older rock chip CPU. We're gonna be moving on to some gaming now. This is Asphalt Extreme, and it runs really well on this board. I'm actually using a Bluetooth Razer servo controller connected with a Bluetooth dongle. Very playable frame rate. I didn't notice any lag at all. This is all pre-set up from the app itself. So I didn't change any of the video settings. I just turned the music off. And it looks great. So the CPU-GPU combo in this is pretty good. The Rockchip 3288 is actually very impressive. I'm very surprised at how well this performs. So I did test Cody and I actually installed the Apollo build and Cody Krypton. It performs amazing. I had no trouble at all streaming movies, any kind of content. Now in this video, I'm not going to show you any streams, but if you have a NAS set up at your house or a friend's house, or you want to stream from online, this board will definitely handle it without an issue. Video playback is stellar on the single board computer. So last test was N64 running Conker's Bad Fur Day, and I'm actually going to come back and I'm going to make a full video testing Dreamcast, PSP, N64, all the emulators that are really hard to run on the Raspberry Pi. I will be doing a full video on here. This was just kind of a sneak peek here, and it runs pretty good. Conker's Bad Fur Day is very hard to run on the Raspberry Pi, and as you can see, we're getting some decent frame rates out of this CPU. So my first impressions, I'm actually really liking this board. Now I'm a sucker for single board computers, but this one is one of the top performers that I've ever tested. Now, given I've only tested it using Android, but I will be doing a video on Debian. I'm gonna install RetroArch, test out some video editors in there and all kinds of stuff. But right now I'm actually really liking this thing. The power is there. If they can keep the development going on this board, it would be a really awesome little option. Now, I know you can go out and buy an Android box or something like that, but I love the single board computer community. This board has potential. It definitely has enough power to run pretty much anything you wanna run. And as the week goes on, keep an eye out for more videos. I'm gonna test Debian, but first up, I wanna install a bunch of emulators in this Android 5.1 build and see how everything performs. We'll do PSP, Dreamcast, PlayStation, Name a few others in the comments and we'll get them installed up and running. Now, we will not run, so Dolphin is out of the question. Like always, thanks for watching.